Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my process, a little bit about my philosophy behind the art, and hopefully answer a bunch of your questions uh, ahead of time. So, um, let's see, I got started building with Lego when I was five years old. Got it Christmas morning, started building immediately, and probably never stopped. Uh, it was, I suppose, around the time I was 10 years old that I really had my first aha moment, and that was when uh, I'd asked my parents if I could get a dog. They said, no, you're not getting a dog, so what did I do? I built myself a life-size Lego dog. It was very colorful, very boxy, quite childlike. I called it a boxer, um, and that was that first moment I realized you know what, uh, Lego can be anything I can imagine it to be. I can use it to create anything I want to pretend. If I want to, if I want to be a magician, I'll, I'll build myself a top hat. If I want to build, be a, pretend to be a rock star, I'll build myself a, a guitar. I, there was no limits to it. As I grew up, Lego was still part of my life, but eventually I went to uh, college, and eventually after college, I didn't really know what to do with my life. I didn't have faith in my art. And I ended up going to law school. And so I practiced law in New York City for several years. But I would come home at night and I would need some sort of creative outlet. Sometimes it was drawing, sometimes painting, and sometimes it was sculpting. And I sculpted out of more traditional media like clay and wire. And one day I just thought, what about Lego? What about this toy from my childhood? Could I build parts out of Lego? And so I did some large scale sculptures. Got a lot of encouragement from friends and family and uh, put a website together. And eventually, people started contacting me through the website to do commissions. And I took on several commissions over, over the years while I was a lawyer. So I was working full days as a lawyer, full evenings on artwork. And it was the day my website crashed from too many hits that I realized, OK, it's time to make a change. And I made that decision to quit the law firm and become a full-time artist. So I opened an art studio in New York City and just proceeded to try and make a living creating art out of Lego. It was an interesting adventure, but it's worked out very well. We now have multiple exhibitions touring the globe, which is great for me because I get to travel a lot. And when I travel, I use that for inspiration. I mean, London alone has been great. There's such a vibrant art scene here. I've become so inspired. I think if you watch what I'm going to do in the next few months, you might see some influences. Um, but I use all that travel to really, uh, to really use that for inspiration. I carry a little sketch pad while I travel so I can jot down ideas as I go. Now, a little bit about my process. I do draw things out. I draw out my ideas first in doodle form and then a little more detail to really have an idea. I draw on something that's called brick paper, which is like the graph paper we had in math class, the little squares, except brick paper instead of squares has rectangles, and the rectangles are the shape of Lego bricks. So that's a good basis to start, kind of have a blueprint for where I'm going with the project. I like to envision the project fully completed before I put down that first brick. Um, what else? Well, while I'm building, I'm actually gluing the bricks together as I go. This has been something I've developed over the years. I used to do it where I, I would build something unglued and then build it again glued. But now I have a little more faith in my gluing in my building. So I glue as I go. I paint a little bit of glue on each brick. And of course there's mistakes. And so I've become very good with a hammer and chisel when I need to uh, tear it apart if there's a problem. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my philosophy, and, and one of the reasons I love using Lego bricks is it, it makes the art very accessible. Uh, I want people to really enjoy the art, but I want the whole family to have something to, to react to. So I think the, this exhibition really is very broad. It's a broad spectrum of art. There are some whimsical pieces, some avant-garde, some very emotional pieces. The idea of using Lego is that it does make the art relatable. Uh, people have Lego, have Lego at home, they've played with the toy, they've played with, or their kids have played with it, so they can kind of connect with the work on a whole different level. Uh, Lego is, for me, very dear, but I think a lot of people have played with it, so they connect with it, and for the most part, I've found that there's something great about using Lego. I love the, the, the bricks, the distinct lines, the sharp corners, but there's a bit of magic to it when you can make those sharp corners into curves. And you'll see with some of the sculptures, the human form, it's still just rectangular pieces that form those curves. Uh, over the years, I have learned that creating art has made me happy. I used to be a lawyer, uh, and these days I'm much happier 
creating art. And so I, I want to share that with as many people as I can. Uh, my motto is art is not optional. And I hope, I hope this exhibition inspires. And uh, that's really about it. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to take questions. What sort of glue do I use? Great question. Um, I use a very special glue. It's really just actually a plastic adhesive, uh, but has a bit of a toxic smell to it. Yes? Um, have you seen the Lego movie and what did I think? Uh, yes, uh, I was fortunately invited to the premiere in Los Angeles and um, I, I actually sat across the aisle from Chris Pratt and so I got to watch his reaction, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it was fantastic. I thought it was very well done and I think it's great because it expands the Lego brand. I think what we found is you know, Lego is universal. I've taken Lego bricks to places. I was in Africa and I had Lego bricks with me and I met some folks who had never heard of Lego. They'd never seen it before. And yet, as soon as I gave them a few bricks, they immediately got it. They immediately understood. Or when we were in China and I didn't speak the language, there's still that universal language of Lego and being able to communicate just through bricks. So it's great. Anyone else? Yes? Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends on where I'm at, right? I mean, there there is a there is some math to it. There's some engineering to any of the projects, of course. Um, some of the works, if you haven't seen them yet, are some have some real scale to them, and they really require more engineering than I expected at times. Um, there's a project in there that's a large hand, and that's a great example of when I was working on it, the proportions just looked were horrible. I mean, I thought they were going the right direction, but at a, at a certain point I looked at it and the proportions were just off. And so I did have to chisel away days and days worth of work, which is heart-wrenching, uh, but it's part of the process. And you go into this process knowing you're going to need you know, hours, days, and a lot of patience for this job. So, anyone else? All right. Is that it? Is that it? Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for coming. It's great to see you all, and I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.